My name is Rima Ilebo, MD, and I am the medical director of the Natural Solutions Foundation. You know, back when schooling included exposure to literature, every high school student read Shakespeare's retelling of the story of King Lear. We learned that the great, wise, and benevolent king had a flaw which ultimately destroyed him. That flaw was called hubris, which is Greek for overweening pride. Today, we would use the term ego. Lear was so horribly cocky that he failed to read any of the warning signs which a prudent, less ego-blinded person would have noted. Instead, he concocted a scenario in which the presentation of love that his daughters and their husbands showered on him were not the blandishments of power-seeking psychophants, which they really were, of course, but real expressions of genuine affection. The one daughter willing to tell him the truth, Cordelia, he cast out because she did not tell him what he wanted to hear. King Lear has taught innumerable students for hundreds of years that lesson, but apparently not well enough. You see, our world economy, and with it, the familiar world order, is being ravaged and destroyed for self-interest, and the heartless gain which the powerful few seek for themselves at the cost of the dependent, the gullible, the vulnerable, in short, of the rest of humanity, now, right now. Because we chose not to see the stupidity and destructiveness of a currency based on nothing, nothing of value, nothing being produced, nothing being created, thinking that the comforts and blandishments of the Ponzi scheme economy of buy more, sell more, consume more, produce nothing much except war and more consumption, we that we have given our safety and birthright into the hands of heartless, falsely smiling monsters just like Lear's daughters, Goneril and Reagan. The Cordelias, like Ron Paul, for example, have been less appealing than the war makers and the freedom thieves who have told us what we wanted to hear that we live in a land of the free and the prosperous at the same time that they were destroying our freedom and stealing our prosperity. Lear went from master to wandering homeless street person. And what lies ahead for us? It is not secret that the sweet blandishments of government and official information sources tell us how loved we are, how well taken care of we are, how well our interests are protected by the Department of Homeland Security, the FDA, the FTC, the EPA, the Pentagon, the United Nations, the World Health Organization, and the Federal Reserve, along with the rest of the globalist structure. Where is the roar of effective protest among the drugged, the floridated, the bemused, the distracted, the deluded Americans who call themselves free. Where are the governance structures and institution that we have taken back for ourselves? It's no secret that the astonishing rate of foreclosures against home owners has halted only to the extent that it has because a courageous judge noted the illegality upon which those foreclosures often rest. Where is the roar of effective protest among the drugged, the floridated, the bemused, the distracted, and the deluded Americans who call themselves free? And where are the governance structures and institutions that we have taken back for ourselves. It is no secret that warrantless surveillance 
electronic intrusion into our supposedly private spheres of action, absent any suspicion of evil doing, draconian swords of hasty, ill-conceived, and fascistic legislation and executive orders, and near-autonomous agencies whose workings we are not privy to, but whose bills we pay with our worthless coin of inflationary destruction, are established and functioning to our collective and individual detriment. Where is the roar of effective protest among the drugged, the floridated, the bemused, the distracted, and the deluded Americans who call themselves free? Where are the governance structures and institutions we have taken back for ourselves? It is no secret that pharmaceutical medicine is a failed, crassly exploitative and deadly joke foisted upon us by those who want our resources and remaining wealth for themselves and then want to bury us in order to have a sustainable planet for themselves. Ninety percent of us buried for their ten percent sustainable population. Where, where is the roar of effective protest among the drugged, the floridated, the bemused, the distracted, and the deluded Americans who call themselves free? Where are the governance structures and institutions that we have taken back for ourselves? We see a future racing toward us in which we are wandering over the heath like the ragged and wretched King Lear after he gave away his power and competence to rule his land and his kingdom to unworthy guardians of both. Hyperinflation, poverty for a once prosperous society, illness, and destruction from a food stock controlled by the very people who profit from our weakness and disease as their stock in trade and whose leaders have ordained our deaths at their convenience, inability to choose our health options complete with forced medication and vaccination, an economy in which only the powerful make decisions and the majority simply serves or is eliminated. This is the do-nothing future. We do nothing and it becomes our future, our life and our destruction. But there is another future which we can reach out for and pull towards ourselves, unlike the other one it requires us to do quite a lot. It is a future in which the injection and ingestion of dangerous drugs is not forced upon us or our children. We choose what use we make of our bodies, how we feed them, and how we heal them. Instead, we can choose freely available natural solutions, basing our decisions on freely available information about what we can expect from clean food and food components like vitamins, minerals, and herbs. It is a future in which the degradation of our environment for the benefit of the heartless few over the vulnerable many is not permitted.